Hi, this is Todd Krieger. Today I'm talking to you about infidelity, when it's time to stay. When a person discovers an affair, it's typically natural to have mixed feelings. Part of you might want to stay. Part of you may want to kick the person out. And that's understandable. But today I'm talking about when it's time to stay. I'll be talking about six conditions and when it's time to stay. What I do for my living, for my passion, is I help couples heal from infidelity and other crises. I help couples also reconnect when they've lost their connection, whether it's a physical connection or emotional connection, and kind of awaken the sleeping marriage. I help individuals heal from trauma, and I also help individuals get out of toxic relationships and work on their insights so that they can attract the person they would love to be in a relationship with. So six conditions or six situations that would make you say, this is worth hanging in there. Okay. The first is that the person who cheated is willing to come to therapy. The person who had the secret is willing to come. That's very important because the reason that person had an affair, and there are always reasons, is an internal one. And in therapy, in good therapy, that person has a chance to look inside and discover what it is. And then from there can make different decisions and hopefully one that keeps the sacredness of that intimate union. The second condition is not only is that person willing to come into therapy, but that person is willing to and has the capacity to reflect on themselves, to be self-aware, and to learn about themselves emotionally. That's very, very crucial. And I oftentimes will have people come in in the first session, I ask them, what made you do it? And the answer sometimes is, I have no idea, I don't know, I don't know. That's not the right answer, by the way, <laughs> but that's the superficial one. But my job is to help that person go deeper in, and I always help them find the answer. And it changes from I don't know to, oh, that's why. So that's very, very important. Come to therapy and their willingness to look inside and take a look inwardly at what, what's going on emotionally that led them to have uh, this indiscretion. The third situation is not only do, are they willing to look within, but you see behavioral changes. They are able to be more vulnerable. They are able to, instead of hide their feelings, they share it with you. And whatever was missing in the early part of the relationships, you start to see it. There's a presence. That person's more emotionally present with you, for one. There's more of an emphasis and a priority on the relationship. And that every day, or at least almost every day, there's quality time together. That's a good sign. That is making this person and this relationship a possibly better risk. The fourth condition is that the person who did the betrayal is willing to listen to the person who was betrayed is willing to let that person who was betrayed grieve. There's a grieving. There's a grieving of innocence, a grieving of purity. And that person has to go through all those feelings. And, the, uh, and oftentimes what will happen with certain people is they'll get defensive. And that's actually okay. It's kind of normal. But as long as they're willing to come back from defensiveness and come back to you, the person who's betrayed, and listen and tolerate his or her own discomfort, while you get to process your own grief, you need the person who betrayed you to listen. And if that person's doing that, there's another good sign. So that's the fourth. The fifth condition is that there, there is no contact at all with the person that they had the extramarital secret, extramarital relationship with, none at all, unless it's unavoidable. Sometimes it's with a coworker, sometimes it's you know, it just wouldn't work to totally stop all contact. But in those situations, that the contact is work-related only, it's, it's circumscribed, it's, it's, there's a boundary around it. And also, that the person who was betrayed gets to know when, where, how, and what is going on between those two people, that you are in the loop. That's all very important. So that is a very important fifth condition. Obviously, the ideal is no contact, but if it's impossible, the way I mentioned, just boundary, focus, and the person who was betrayed is in the loop.
And the sixth is that you know that even though you are hurt as the betrayed person, that that person has a good heart, that you have good feelings about this person, that you know that there's something redeeming about this person, and that it's worth restoring the relationship and worth restoring the connection. Just know that people around you may be giving you superficial advice, leave the person, and you gotta follow what's right for you. Don't judge yourself if you've chosen to stay. And people that leave, I would say the same thing, don't judge to leave for leaving, but definitely don't judge for staying. Don't judge yourself for staying. So it's important to give yourself permission to follow your own heart. So those are the six conditions in which you may give pause and say, oh, this relationship may be worth hanging around for. So I would encourage you strongly to click on the link, 10 Steps to Healing After Infidelity, and I think that will help. And I'm here to help in any way you need. Of course, that's what I do much of my time, and I wish you the best. This is Todd Krieger, making the world safe for love.